And that's why I don't do special effects. Welcome back my creative family. Thank you so much for joining me on another tutorial. Today we are talking about stepping up your Instagram game, specifically more like Jesse Driftwood. Um, today I'm gonna to give a couple of tips and tricks um, and techniques that he uses in his stories to make them come alive, make them really engaging. And these are techniques that you can definitely apply to your stories, um, your regular filmmaking, really pretty much anything. Just a quick disclaimer before we start, I'm picking Jesse Driftwood as an example because he uses so many different techniques that, that you can apply to all different sorts of uh, filmmaking. And it's just really cool to sort of um, pick them apart and take a look at what makes his stories unique. Um, I'm definitely not saying go out and copy him. I'm definitely not saying make your stuff more like him. Sometimes you might watch something and see that it's really, really good and you might not be able to pick out the techniques. I'm just here to highlight those techniques and show you what they are and how you can use them in your films. If you know who Jesse Driftwood is, you know he makes awesome Instagram stories, and that's why you're here. If you don't know who he is, I've linked his Instagram profile below. Please go check it out. Um, get a feel for what I'm talking about here. I've linked his YouTube channel below as well. Please go check him out, show him some love, and let's get started. So we're gonna break this tutorial down into two parts. The first part is gonna be production. So how are you actually going to shoot it? I'm gonna show you everything you need to shoot it so you have the best possible footage to bring into post-production. The second part is obviously post-production. I'm gonna show you uh, the more technical side of how to set up the timeline, how to edit it, and how to use some of the techniques that he uses. I'm going to be showing you example clips of an Instagram story I made along the way so you get an idea of how it looks in practice. All right, so step number one. When you grab your camera to shoot, it is very important that you will be shooting in portrait mode. You'll be holding the camera vertical up and down. You will not shoot this way. This is for regular aspect ratio. This will scale nicely to a mobile phone um, or portable device. Number two, you want to have your camera set in the highest frame rate possible. I shot my stories on what I'm shooting on now, which is the A7 III. I shot it at either 120 frames per second or 60 frames per second. That gives you the most flexibility in post if you wanna slow something down. If you don't wanna slow it down, you can still play it back at 24 frames. However, if you do wanna ha um, have a section of speed ramping and, and slow motion, you, at least you'll have that flexibility with 60p or 120p. Once you have your camera set at the proper resolution, at the proper frame rate at either 120 or 60p, you can then start shooting in portrait mode. Now, one very important thing Jesse does, and I'll show you here in a second, is that he thinks about his transitions from one scene to the next. That's how he moves his stories along quickly, is that he thinks about his transitions and he uses in-camera transitions to help go from one clip to another. So what I mean is he'll either use a quick tilt up, down, pan left, or pan right. And that will just go into the next clip, which he'll begin with either a pan in the same direction or a tilt in the same direction. This combined with speed ramping, which I'll show you later, will seamlessly help the story flow together and um, just keep driving it forward. Should have a couple examples on the screen coming up so you can kind of see what I mean uh, with the tilting and the panning. That is pretty much it for filming. The rest comes down to how you shoot in terms of getting proper exposure, uh, proper framing and composition. Those are all individual and everybody's gonna have their own style. And Jesse certainly has his own style. So that's why even, I, even though I'm giving you all these techniques, there's no way your story is gonna be the same. I also made a story and for the purpose of this tutorial, I try to sort of emulate his style, but it, again, it's not gonna be the same. Everything comes down to your editing style and how you choose to ultimately put it together and tell your story. Okay, in part two of the tutorial, we're gonna dive into Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna show you the timeline settings and the project settings, and then we're gonna go through um, how to use some of the techniques that just uses such as speed ramping and um, slow motion. Okay, so just wait here while it loads up. Okay, so jumping into Final Cut, we're gonna create a new project. Thing you wanna do is make it a custom resolution and you're just gonna switch 1080 and 1920. So not 1920 by 1080, but 1080 by 1920. Everything else we can leave the same, it looks fine, it should look something like this. Okay. You can see right here in the viewer that our lens, that our video is actually portrait mode and it'll actually show up perfectly on an iPhone or a smartphone. So next, you're gonna to go to your clips and you're gonna start dropping them in. So let's say this clip is the one I want. We're gonna drop it in. As you can see, our clip is not in the correct orientation. So here's a little trick. If your clip, when you're looking at it, is tilted left, then you're gonna go into rotation and hit minus 90. That should set it perfectly straight. If 
the clip is tilted like this one is to the right, drop that in. It's not the correct orientation yet, but when I click on rotation, it's just gonna be 90 degrees. And that will bring it to the right. So right is 90, left is minus 90. Next, once that's set, we're gonna go down to scale and we're gonna scale it up to 180. If it looks like, if you shot it in 1080p, it should look like this. 180% should bring it up right. This one, 180. Okay, great. The next thing we're gonna talk about is transitions. So if you've done your in-camera transitions correctly, what you're gonna do is set up the clips next to each other that belong next to each other so you can transition neatly into uh, one another. And this is what I mean. So this clip, I'm finishing talking. I pan the camera down, or sorry, I pan the camera up. And in this clip, I'm panning the camera from, from the floor up in the same motion to my feet. So it's going up and up and I continue. So when you play it back, it, it looks pretty smooth. Um, not the smoothest, could have been better, but it's still pretty decent. In this clip, it actually worked fine without any speed ramping. Now Jesse actually uses a lot of speed ramping and he uses it for sometimes just the clip itself to give it a certain feel, whether it's to slow it down and then speed it up and slow it down again. Or he'll also use it to quickly speed up the end of a clip and speed up the beginning of the other clip so we can transition in, uh, in between clips. And this is what I mean. So if I zoom in here, you can see when I finish tying my shoes, this clip's already at 400% and it's going into uh, me opening the garage at another at another clip that's 400%. So it looks like this. So it's the same movement. I'm still doing the movement up and I'm going up here as well, but the speed ramp or the, uh, the increased speed is helping um, blend that transition a little bit better. And so that's definitely a key technique you can use um, if you like something that's fast paced or you want to just speed up the, uh, uh, the rate of the story, that'll help it flow better. Um, it can definitely be used in, in certain cases. Then for the rest of the time, you can see it's slow motion, slow motion, and then it goes to something fast again. So I whip this down and I whip this across. They're not even, they're actually not even the same. This is down and this is across, but it kind of works because it looks like it's a similar movement. And so, you know, you can get away with it. The one thing I don't like is you can see the flash of the, the overexposed light from outside the garage. So here it's not light and here it is. So it, it kind of gives it away. Whereas if it was just dark and I was, you know, panning up or down or left or right, then it'd be a really smooth transition. Okay, so here's how we actually do the speed ramping transition inside Final Cut. So what I like to do is, what I like to do is find the part where the in-camera transition starts. So right here, my goofy face and press Shift B. That'll make a cut just at the speed section, not a cut in the clip. Then you can um, set this to fast and it'll automatically put a transition there. So it looks like that. So it just goes really quickly into it. Um, you can speed it up here by adjusting it. Um, that obviously doesn't fit with this clip, but um, that's just to show you what it would look like. And you can do the same thing with the um, incoming clip. Um, either shift N, I mean that makes, that makes it uh, a cut as well, or shift B is the same thing. And you just go fast, uh, four times usually works. Now if you do this a lot, what I found works is, is setting a shortcut. So if I wanna make just this area four times faster, I set mine to shift option four. And there we go, and it goes into the other clip. So it goes out and in. So that's speed ramping, pretty simple. Um, you can play around with it and really get different um, looks, and you can get really different feels depending on how you use these speed ramps. Slow, going into slow motion, coming out of it, transitioning into another clip, very versatile, um, and it's a good tool to use um, for all different types of edits. Okay, so some of the other non-tangible or non-teachable things, I guess, um, to tell you about things or to tell you that make Jesse's stories really unique. It, one of the things I noticed is that he really is um, very picky on choosing music uh, that fits the mood, that really brings out um, the footage that he's, that he's shot. I really think that can bring your story to life um, in a new way. And music is super important. So he, he edits a lot to the music, he edits the music itself to fit. Um, he's, he's really intricate when it comes to that stuff. So that's something you guys can pay attention to in, in all of your edits because it's just gonna make your edits that much better. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, let's say his story is one minute long. Um, on the export, while he's exporting his story into parts that are 15 seconds or less, if 
a part of his story falls at 15 seconds where he's maybe speaking or the, there's a part of the music that hits he won't export it he'll he'll make it shorter than that or longer or I mean, you can't make it longer than 15 seconds but he'll make it shorter than that so that when when the clip changes over when you're watching it it doesn't affect the overall story it doesn't affect anybody speaking or like a hit of the music or anything like that so um, make sure you're conscious of the size of the clips you're exporting and how it's gonna look when you watch it back with a slight you know cut in between them how he'll do that is he'll just pick the range tool select the amount uh, that he wants to export like here we just select the whole amount and then go to export um, you can probably pick Apple devices 1080p is probably gonna work the best that's just it um, it's pretty simple the settings Apple devices h264 better quality um, that's, the, that's our custom frame size and that's it and just export it. So once you export it, you can do two things. You can either throw that those files into Dropbox, go onto your phone and pick them up from Dropbox or you can just throw them right over to AirDrop and that'll go right into your phone's um, camera roll and you can upload them that way from Instagram. Um, but overall, it's, it, it is his voice, it's his style of editing, it's um, how detailed he looks at the music and his clips in terms of the placement and where they fall in terms of the music and how that uh, amplifies what he's trying to tell in the story. Uh, his use of speed ramping, um, his voice and generally his his style of editing, it's, it's just so unique and, and I think that's why we all like watching this, his stories because um, it is it is something unique and not everybody's doing it that way. Hopefully this gives you some more tools to play around with um, and to find your voice in your stories and to make something really unique that people also love watching as well. So I have my final exported story up on my Instagram. Um, please check it out. Here's the my Instagram handle below. Drop a message shoot me a comment, tell me you watched the video, tell me if it helped, if it didn't. So that's it guys, thank you so much for joining me on this one. Uh, if you want to Instagram like Jesse Driftwood, all you have to do is pretty much have him as your friend and he can give you all the info. No, I'm just kidding. I hope that was helpful. Uh, big shout out to Jesse and thank you for um, hanging out for today and uh, doing a little collab. And I will see you in the next one. Oh.